Continuing our background for radioactivity, we're almost there. In the last video on background, we saw that the half-life TH was 1 over the decay rate, and the number of particles left was equal to the number that we started out with, which was n of 0 times 0, which was 8, times 2 to the negative, this decay rate. If you look back, the pink curve had a decay rate of 1, the curve above it slowly decaying rate a half, and the other one had a decay rate of 2. Now I can't keep writing decay rate all the time, it's too cumbersome, so I'll put in lambda. So this looks like 2 to the minus lambda t. That's what this whole thing looks like. Recall that when t is 1 over lambda, 1 over the decay rate, the magic 2 to the minus 1, we get half left. Nature is not so nice as powers of 2. There are lots of numbers in nature that are weird. One of them is pi, related to circles. Another one is i. We call that an imaginary number, but really it's very real. It represents rotations counterclockwise of 90 degrees. And then there's e, another magic number of nature. Now where does e come from? It comes from your very nice banker. Suppose you put money in the bank and you got compound interest not every year, not every six months, but continuously as the period evolved. And if you do the calculation of how much you'll get after a certain time, out comes the magic number of E. Clearly, that's related to exponential growth. Now, in the real world, our half-life is basically the same with a magic number on top. And the magic number on top is because we don't have 2 here, we have E, because E is the natural growth rate. It's magic, it's got implications in banking, its numerical value is 2.718281828 on and on, so Math people use E because they're lazy, like me. That's where it comes from nature. Finally, the half-life is inversely dependent on the decay rate. So one, not one over, but magic number over, and I will describe that in some edX exercises that you will use to compute half-lives from decay rates. The decay rate is measured in the laboratory. And now we have our time scale that we need to measure half-lives and to make policy decisions about how serious certain areas of the world are radioactively contaminated.